Nighttime can be inspirational. Some of your best ideas might come to you around midnight or later if you're a night owl like I am. I can't even count the amount of times I've stayed up until 1, 2, or 3 o'clock in the morning puttering around the workshop, wandering around the wilderness to take some nighttime photos or videos, or recording music and doing other inspired projects on my computer. But one thing you don't want to do is ruin your sleep and increase your risk of disease by exposing yourself to blue light at night. That would be the light coming from your computer screen, television, cell phone, and yes, the extremely bright LEDs or fluorescent lighting in your workshop. From a Harvard Medical School article titled Blue Light Has a Dark Side, it reads, At night, light throws the body's biological clock, the circadian rhythm, out of whack. Sleep suffers. Worse, research shows that it may contribute to the causation of cancer, diabetes, heart disease, and obesity. And while light of any kind can suppress the secretion of melatonin, blue light at night does so more powerfully. Harvard researchers and their colleagues conducted an experiment comparing the effects of 6.5 hours of exposure to blue light to exposure to green light of comparable brightness. The blue light suppressed melatonin for about twice as long as the green light and shifted circadian rhythms by twice as much. 3 hours versus 1.5 hours. In another study of blue light, researchers at the University of Toronto compared the melatonin levels of people exposed to bright indoor light who were wearing blue light blocking goggles to people exposed to regular dim light without wearing goggles. The fact that the levels of the hormones were about the same in the two groups strengthens the hypothesis that blue light is a potent suppressor of melatonin. It also suggests that shift workers and night owls could perhaps protect themselves if they wore eyewear that blocks blue light. Inexpensive sunglasses with orange tinted lenses block blue light, but they also block other colors, so they're not suitable for use indoors at night. Glasses that block out only blue light can cost up to $80. These German safety goggles from Garrett Wade can be bought for $20 plus shipping, or they can be found elsewhere, like eBay, under the name of George Schmerler Model 717 German Safety Goggles. Lee Valley also has a version with an adjustable nose strap, which I haven't tried yet, but will be trying as soon as they're back in stock. They use a classic screw cap design, which makes swapping lenses a breeze. Simply screw the aluminum cap off, and then you're free to clean or replace the lens, drop it back into the aluminum cap, and screw it back on. I occasionally take the caps off and put a couple drops of 3-in-1 oil on the threads to keep them from rusting. Now, back to blue light and how to block it. The stock lenses on these goggles are made out of laminated safety glass and are a simple 50 mm diameter circle. The circle is completely flat, not convex like some lenses. That means that any flat material can be used as lenses in these goggles. Here I'm using a hole saw in my drill press to cut a 50 mm circle out of number 2422 transparent amber acrylic. The discs came out perfect and fit into the screw caps just as well as the original lenses. But why am I using 2422 Amber? After doing some research online, I found that the specific wavelengths of blue light most associated with melatonin suppression are 450 nanometers to 480 nanometers. And upon finding a spectrometer test and a spectrophotometer test for 2422 Amber acrylic, I found some very interesting results. It completely blocks 400 to 450 nanometers, blocks 99.8% at 460 nanometers, blocks 99.1% at 470 nanometers, and blocks 97.8% at 480 nanometers. As you can see visually represented in the spectrophotometer plot on the left, 2422 Amber Acrylic does a phenomenal job of blocking blue light in the 400 to 500 nanometer range, which is exactly what you'd want in a pair of blue blocking lenses. And not only will this block blue light, but acrylic has some distinct advantages over polycarbonate, which is what's used in most commercial blue blocking eyewear. 
According to Advanced Plastiform Incorporated, acrylic is significantly more resistant to scratching and scuff marks. Eyeglass lenses made from polycarbonate are often protected with anti-scratch coating to make them more durable and resistant to scratching. What this means for you if you're making your own lenses out of acrylic, or buying some pre-made ones online, is that no fancy coatings are required. Further, acrylic can be polished to bring back clarity and is resistant to yellowing. Over time, polycarbonate can lose clarity or become yellowed when exposed to UV light, but it can't be polished. I personally use either Novus 2 or Meguiar's Plast X for plastic polishing, and both of them work phenomenally well on acrylic. Acrylic is also more optically clear with a slightly better light transmittance. 92% versus polycarbonate's 88%. The one major downside to acrylic is it's only 10 times more impact resistant than glass, while polycarbonate is 250 times more impact resistant than glass. So if you're working with power tools that might be a threat to your eyes, stick with American National Standards Institute certified safety glasses. But for puttering around, working with hand tools, watching movies, sitting at the computer, or other benign activities, Acrylic is the superior choice for its better optical clarity and the ability to buff it out to crystal clear transparency whenever the need arises. As for the goggles themselves, the only caveat is that there are a lot of complaints about the straps being too short. A quick and easy solution is to simply tie one of these small black rubber bands around the straps where they exit the slot. The rubber band will secure the strap and prevent it from slipping. As the strap stretches out and loosens up over time, you can simply pull either side tighter, then roll the rubber band back down to the slot, and you're good to go. You can also search for braided elastic cord or knit elastic spool on Amazon or eBay, and you'll find plenty of options for making your own strap. The elastic cord on the Garrett Wade goggles is 15.5 millimeters wide, and here's one example of exactly that measurement available on Amazon. It's even available in three different colors if you really want to go hog wild, but that much excitement might keep you from falling asleep even if you're wearing your blue blocking goggles, so be careful. You can also get some neoprene slap straps used for diving masks if you want some extra padding on the back of your head. They open and close with Velcro and are super easy to put on or take off, so you might as well give them a try. So that's the gist of it. If you want more in-depth information, I've put links in the description box to all the resources I mentioned in the video. And probably the most comprehensive is Russell Graves' blog post, the one with a little picture of the angry light bulb that says how your LED lights and screens are killing you. So he posted that on 2-11-2023. is super in-depth. So if you really want to do a deep dive on all this stuff, I would definitely check that out. Another thing I wanted to mention was these great apps for the smartphone and the computer for changing the temperature of the display. I'm on Windows and use f.lux on the computer, and on my Android smartphone I use an app called Twilight. These don't block blue light or prevent blue light from coming through the screen completely, but they do reduce the amount. I swear they help with sleep. It's much better than nothing. And even during the daytime, on the computer and on the phone, I find they really do reduce eye strain a lot. So definitely check those out. You're going to want to get some color temperature adjustment apps for your computer and your phone. Now, a couple extra notes on the goggles themselves. So what's really cool is these are much more enclosed, obviously, than a pair of glasses. So you get a lot of blocking of your peripheral vision, and also above and below. So when you're watching TV, playing a game, or whatever you're doing with a screen, the goggles provide a much more immersive experience by blocking out more of your vision except directly what you're looking at in front of you, which is really cool. So another aspect of these is at least with my prescription glasses, I can fit them right over the goggles. So they just sit right there, and that just fits like a glove. I mean, they just sit on there perfectly. Anyway, I am recording this in the middle of the day, so I am going to go take these off and get some sunlight. Depending on your job, not always feasible. But if you can, really make an effort to get out there and get some sunlight. So your circadian rhythm works based off of both of those. You need sunlight exposure 
and then you want to be restricting the blue light exposure in the evening. So I'm going to go do that and get some sunlight or whatever's left of it today. And hopefully this video's inspired you to go get your own goggles and either make or buy your own blue blocking lenses for them. And, of course, the blue blockers, or any blue blocking glasses, whatever brand you use, they do work, they do a very good job, they are more socially acceptable in most cases. Not all. But I just love the blocking of the peripheral vision and everything else you get with the goggles. You get, again, that complete enclosure. Man, there's just, they're just great. 